Hey, it's Paul here, Cisco CCNA in 60 days. The book is volume four, version four, sorry. If you want to grab a copy on Amazon, it matches the videos pretty much exactly with some extra labs and bits and bobs. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel. We add a lot of other videos for IT certifications and career advice for IT. And there's a bell icon if you want to see all the videos you get notified by uh, YouTube. So I thought today was a final review today, but it's not. It's day 32 and it's first hot redundancy protocols. This is another strange one because they don't tell you what they're testing on. So I've had to make a best effort um, guesstimate, I suppose. So today, do all the usual stuff you've been doing every single day. Don't skip it. Now, today, the theory is HSRP, GLBP, VRRP. I think you need to know about all three and the differences. There's some commands and how they work and what they do. I did have labs for all of them, but at the moment I've just got a HSRP lab. I think that's the best bet, to be honest. But um, you can do some of the labs if you want. I think you'll find it on the 101 Labs uh, Cisco CCNA book, but um, you can get some configs off um, Cisco website. I think Packet Tracer will support all of it, but do check. The three books that will give you a big boost come exam day, so check those out. The links are in the description. So that's all for now. We'll get on to the theory, and I'll see you tomorrow. High availability or first hop redundancy protocols. Again, the new subject that's dropped down from the CCMP switch, still in there, but uh, it's part of it's in the CCNA syllabus now. Um, the only thing is, there's a lot more detail, as you can imagine, in the CCMP switch. So um, I'll show you some configuration commands, but I don't really think they're going to be asking you to configure first top redundancy protocols in the CCNA exam. So we're not going to do a lab. If I hear any different, then I will add a, add a lab. But basically, the whole point behind high availability is network resilience. So if one part of it breaks, then um, can the network continue to function and do the users have IP connectivity? All right, so... Um, First aspect we're going to be looking at is HSRP, Hot Standby uh, Router Protocol. We're going to look at Virtual Redundancy Router Protocol, Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. All three are mentioned in the syllabus. HSRP Cisco invented, and basically it allows two physical gateways to share the same virtual IP address. Um, and hosts on the subnet, all they have is the, the virtual IP address as their default gateway. They don't actually know that there's a... Um, any redundancy going on. So here's an example. Uh, HSRP is working on this particular network. It's running on two core layer three switches. And you can see we've got um, redundant, redundant connections between all of our workgroup switches and our core switches. Uh, top left-hand switch, switch one, is configured with an interface in VLAN 10. It's given an IP address, 10.10.10.2, uh, .10 so it's got its own IP address. It's also got a virtual address of 10.10.10.1, .10 and it's given a priority, a HSRP priority of 105, which is higher than the priority on the right-hand side switch. The left-hand switch is the going to be the priori priority gateway for all traffic because it's got the higher priority. If for any reason it goes down, then the right-hand switch, switch 2, will take over. The, um, I've seen questions actually on this particular part. The virtual MAC address for HSRP is shown here, uh, 00000C07AC. And then uh, the two X's signify the HSRP group number. So when you configure that, the last two um, numbers will be populated by the group number. Now bear in mind that the virtual MAC will show that number in a hexadecimal value. So um, I've just seen that in um, exam type questions before, so it's worth bearing in mind. Okay, uh, in the real world, whichever is a primary switch should also be the route for your spanning tree and also your layer three routing. If, um, if for whatever reason your um, left-hand switch was the route for layer two, um, 
but the right hand switch was a route for layer three traffic, then it's going to be very inefficient for all of the packets traversing your network. They're going to have to go between the two switches. And also obviously the same being the root bridge. So whichever uh, your root bridge is should also be your primary gateway, which in this particular example it is. Default priority is 100. If a virtual IP is the same, then the highest IP address becomes the primary gateway. So if they've both uh, got the same virtual IP address, then it chooses the highest IP as the gateway. Preemption is when a gateway with a higher priority comes online. Now, it can only become the active gateway if preemption is turned on. So what this means is if you've got um, one device as priority 110 and another one as 120 as a priority when it comes online, it won't actually become the primary gateway unless you've enabled preemption. Well, we'll see the command for that in a while. So you can see um, just another example here, HSRP running between two core switches, the uh, host name, the VLAN, the VLAN is given an, an IP address, an actual physical address. HSRP priority is 100 on the right and 105 on the left, and then they've both got the same virtual IP address. Configuration for the uh, left-hand switch is shown here, the IP address for VLAN 172. Standby 1 is the, one is the group number, the IP address is the virtual IP address, and then standby 1 is priority 105. Right-hand uh, core switch, IP address also configured, the standby IP address is exactly the same. I haven't configured a priority on this because the default is 100, so it will just leave it as 100. Uh, VRRP is an open standard. The virtual MAC address is uh, as shown. Preemption is turned on by default for this protocol. And what you have here is a master and a backup um, election. So you can, uh, you can see three, uh, three layer three switches ab above. Uh, priority is 110 on the far left, the middle one's 105, and then default priority is 100 on the far right hand side. So the far left hand router would be the master, and uh, the middle router would be the backup. Configuring VRRP is similar to HSRP actually. Uh, configured our VLAN, IP address, our uh, virtual redundancy router protocol group is 1. Uh, and, the, and the virtual IP address. I've configured a priority. I've actually given this one a description in this example. Gateway low balancing protocol. Cisco priority, uh, pri proprietary, same as HSRP. It allows for multiple gateways and there's one active virtual gateway per elected per group. The active virtual gateway answers all our requests from hosts looking for a, a gate, the gateway address. And the, um, the active virtual gateway assigns a virtual MAC address to each member of the group. So you can see here we've got um, three core uh, switches again. Priority 110, 105 and down to the default of 100. They've all got the same virtual gateway address, all part of the same uh, group. Virtual MAC address is different though for each of the three gateways. Configuring um, gateway load balancing protocol, you can see we've got a VTP server one, uh, priority 110, the group and the VLAN, um, VLAN number, the IP address in the VLAN and the gateway address. I've added the configuration here for um, VTP server one, GLBP1, the IP address, and the priority. Welcome to our lab on HSRP. Got a PC in the bottom with an IP address and default gateway. Default gateway is going to the HSRP address of 172.16.1.100. This is a, a standby group. Got a router on the left with 172.16.1.1, 1 1.2 on the right. On the top you can just see um, a connection that's going out to the internet which we won't be looking at or configuring. 
Now, you can configure the uh, default gateway and IP address on the uh, PC at the bottom if you wish. Now, this isn't actually going to be tested as part of the lab, so if you want, you could just leave it. But I've uh, put the configuration on here. Obviously, we're using Packet Tracer because it's uh, HSRP supported on Packet Tracer. Not all of the commands, uh, for example, uh, HSRP authentication isn't supported. However, pretty sure that isn't actually covered in the exam either. So you wouldn't need to be putting the um, authentication in. So on the left hand router, uh, we've got router zero here. We'll add the IP address to the interface so we can bring it up. So the PC will then have connectivity and the switch. So the left hand router, all pretty simple stuff that you've done many times before up to this point, I'm sure. And we'll go over and do the 1.2 address on the other side. Not going to bother about the top interfaces going off to the internet there. I was just to show you the um, topology that would be used usually. Alright, so we'll go back to the left hand router, router 0. Now standby one, one. this will create the HSRP group and the group number is 1. I'll just hit a uh, question mark so you can see all the different commands available. Preempt priority, timers, um, interface tracking isn't included in the syllabus. I'll show you the command later on. but. Um, it actually supports the track command, but then doesn't support the other the other options that you would usually add with tracking. So this is the uh, virtual IP address. It's going to be shared across the group between the two routers, 1.100. Standby one priority. Uh, the default is 100. If you want to force a particular router to be the master, then you would add a priority higher than the default. So I'll add 105 here. I'll leave the priority command off the right hand router so you can see the default. Uh, now I made a mistake in the config here. For some reason it lets you type out standby preempt but without the HSRP um, group. Which is a bit strange really. I don't know why it, it lets you do that. So I'm trying to type in standby name here. I should have put standby uh, and then the group number and then um, the name. I just wanted to see if the command was supported. So you could put standby one name and then CCNA, for example, if you wanted the group to have a name. It doesn't need a name, it'll work perfectly well with just the uh, group. Now, um, you do need to know about the different version numbers. You can uh, choose number uh, version number one or two. I think it defaults to version number one. Uh, some uh, differences between the two uh, versions. You can tell it's using version 1. Um, I covered this in the presentation actually because you can look at the um, standby group numbers put into the virtual MAC address. Same commands on the right hand router. We are not configuring the priority. We're going to leave that as the default. And again you can see uh, I missed off the standby group number there. I've never found an answer as to why you can configure these standby commands without putting in the standby group number. Uh, useful to see the um, message here saying the group has gone from speak to standby. Show standby. There's other show commands but they aren't supported on Packet Tracer. The active router is the other router. There's the default priority. Standby router is local, which means us, we're the standby router. And again, I don't know what I was thinking when I was configuring this, but uh, it let me put in the standby preempt command, but without the group number. So you can see preemption is disabled. So I'll have to go back and uh, configure that correctly. I suppose it's useful that you saw me missing that mistake off because although I've configured this quite a few times, 
um, I still made that mistake. So just means other people could probably do the same. Stand by one. Preempt. You can drill down to the standby group if you're using an iOS router, but it doesn't let you do it in their packet tracer. Preemptions are now enabled. This is the sort of thing they could test you on in the exam preemption, so it's well worth knowing how to do that. And we're using version one, so you can see the group number is added to the end of the virtual MAC address, which is AC, and then 01, which is the group number. Show standby on our left hand router. And I was just looking for the tag that you can use. You can only use the brief tag here, which uh, doesn't really give you much information. I suppose if you had a few groups, you'd want to use the standby brief uh, command. Show standby brief. So preemptions disabled, which again threw me off because I configured it, but I just forgot to put the group number in. Our priority is higher. Which goes to sh which has made this the um, active router, and then we've got preempt finally configured on this side. Active router is local. Uh, standby timers, not not um, in the syllabus, but I just thought I'd put that command on there. You can change the timers, make sure they match on both sides, which is the usual uh, requirement. And then um, I'll just put in the um, tracking command, hoping that I'd be able to decrement the um, priority each time the interface goes down. But it looks like Packet Tracer doesn't actually support that facility. So you can do tracking. Have a look at just have a look at what the command track does without any further configuration. Uh, just if you're interested. Otherwise, um, I don't think this is actually in the CCNA syllabus. So uh, we'll leave it for there for now. But um, come to the end of the lab. Thanks for watching.